Hello? Hey, Jerry, yeah, I'm doing the thing for the nostalgia critic. What do you mean I'm not getting paid? Okay, okay, hold, hold, hold on. Are you telling me that I won't be getting paid for this? <laughs> Nicholas Cage. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. Guy, remember it so you don't have to. I've heard of worse ways to try and get Nicolas Cage into the Avengers. I guess Nicolas Cage was so good at making it look like his skull was burning out of his face that this seemed like an inevitable decision. Ghost Rider, based on the famous Marvel comic series, is arguably the fucking coolest looking thing conceived since Bacon Robot Demon Slayer. It's mine! <laughs> So how can an idea as friggin' awesome as this possibly go astray? Well, getting the writer and director of Daredevil, Elektra, and Jack Frost is a good fucking start. Yeah, the guy who made something that's supposed to be adorable terrifying and something that's supposed to be terrifying adorable. We're in good fucking hands! Let's finish off Nicolas Cage Month with Ghost Rider. The movie starts with Sam Elliott giving an opening narration, which immediately makes me think we're watching a Chevy truck commercial. It's said that the West was built on legends, tall tales that help us make sense of things too great or too terrifying to believe. This is the legend of the Ghost Rider. And I'm talking about the dude here. He speaks of a person who did the devil's bidding until he came across a contract of a thousand souls. But that contract was so powerful, he knew he could never let the devil get his hands on it. Yeah, so a sheet of paper is the big end all this movie has to offer. Because there's nothing more terrifying than legal ramifications. So he did what no writer has ever done before. He outran the devil himself. So what you're saying is the devil in this world is a pretty lame one. The thing about legends is sometimes they're true. And sometimes there's a man. Okay, I'm getting my big Lebowski jar here, because trust me, I'm gonna need it. Thus the credits burn through the screen to reveal... Bowser's Castle on level 4 of Mario Kart. Here we go! Look out for the association with relativity and media! Woo Cut to years later as we see a young daredevil named Johnny Blaze. Partaking in a father and son act, presumably called the Flaming Speed Racers. But his father doesn't like how he's trying to impress his girlfriend in the audience. You're already screwing around. I was just doing it for the crowd. Both know why you've done it. You think she's gonna stand by you when you're in a wheelchair? Huh, hot shot? I never would have expected a daredevil would be such a show off. But things get complicated when his girlfriend named Roxanne, played by Eve Mendez, tells her beau that she has to leave. And. Is it me, or are you waiting for Albert Finney's big fish narration to take over any minute? We'll jump on the bike and just keep going. Tomorrow, noon, we'll meet here. It was then that I realized my adventures had just begun, all leading up to when I dressed in drag on that island in Summer Isle. That was a weird weekend. He discovers, though, that he can't leave because his father found out he's dying of cancer which is news to a certain horned one's ears, played by Peter Fonda. Worried about your father. The thing about cancer is the time it takes. Plans that have to be changed. I couldn't help but notice your cartoonishly silly shadow. Are you perchance a Muppet of sorts? Would you be willing to make a deal? Name your price. I'll take... your soul. Knew it. You're from Google, aren't you? Look, I already signed up for Google Plus even though I don't need it. How much more control of my life do you want? Blaze agrees, of course, to make a contract with him, and his father is miraculously saved from certain death, only to accidentally slip into certain death. Dad. Dad. Oh, well, gee, who would have thought you can't trust the devil? You're no good to me, Dad. You. 
You killed him. I awkwardly ask you to pull my finger in defiance. I'll be watching. So the devil claims him as his property, which means he can't run off with his girlfriend. He doesn't even give her an excuse. He just looks at her and rides off like the wind or rain or some bullshit. And we cut ahead years later to the reveal of our star, the Cage Man. Hallelujah. He's transformed into the most famous daredevil in the world. But his helpers question how he's been able to survive so many injuries without a scratch for so long. You should be taking a dirt nap after that ragdoll today. I got lucky. And you got an angel looking after you. Yeah, maybe. What's the ante? Five part draw. Yeah. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's Maybelline. But not too far away, we get the reveal of our main villain, played by Wes Bentley. I just like doing that at random, you know, just walking across empty desert and suddenly going, Rah! I mean, it may seem pointless to you, but if there happened to be a camera in front of me, it may possibly scare a seven-year-old, but uh, not an adult because that'd be childishly silly. But uh, I'm going to keep doing it because, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's just my thing, you know. I, it's just me. Rah! It's like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And yes, folks, this is what the villain of our movie looks like. Because isn't this who you want to see Nicolas fucking Cage go up against? That bag-filming pussy from American Beauty? Oh yeah, it's just as good as when they teamed up Vin Diesel against Kat Dennings. Or Dwayne The Rock Johnson against Tyler Perry as Medea. Or Mark Wahlberg against that snowman from Frozen. Don't underestimate him, he bites. So he takes out Curly of Hell's Stooges and calls upon his minions a rejected Matrix concept art. While that's going on, Cage gets settled into his garage where he looks to relax before his next big stunt. Oh, I see you still haven't gotten a lock for your lift. That's great, great. You got a lot of expensive bikes in here, man. I told you. Well, JB, I said it before, I'll say it again. This place could use a woman's touch. So could you. All right, four out of five. Wreck one more and you get the whole set. I actually want to talk to you about something kind of serious. It's about you jumping on the anniversary of your dad's accident. Yeah, let's see. What other exposition did I miss out here? Oh, books! Yeah, books! You still like to read books, JB? On this, the anniversary of your father's death? I'm trying to relax, Mac. Yeah, I understand. All right, it's just gonna take a second. And I'm not even kidding. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. Cage's idea of relaxing in this movie is pouring jelly beans into a martini glass and laughing at videos of monkeys doing karate. <laughs> you know, why is it I get the feeling that Nicolas Cage wouldn't do this movie unless this specific setup was in it? Would it really surprise So he's just about to do his biggest stunt when he comes across his old flame, Roxanne, who's now a reporter. And he gives what many would consider a very typical Nicolas Cage interview. Johnny, what drives somebody to risk their life for entertainment? I heard you got married. Most of the time, the press focuses on the crashes, the broken bones, the costs of what you do. Are there any other costs? Uh... Yeah. Why do I get a terrible feeling that this demonic hell spawn of fire and awesomeness is just gonna be a guy waking up for two hours? So he does his jump, but realizes he wanted to talk to Roxanne some more. Pull over! I can green screen some more effects if you want. Uh, hold on, why don't I make it more convincing by adding the Na'vi and Jar Jar Binks to the mix? Who's a really, really hot So you're gonna love you long time. So he finally stops them and he has a nice long conversation with her. Look, you were 17 and you witnessed a tragedy and you ran. And I understand now like I understood then and I have no hard feelings, none, you know? And that's why they call it the past, because it's past, it's done, it's over with. I call this the if I did in real life, I'd probably be arrested kiss. It worked great in the notebook. Eight o'clock. Yes! So, Cage is finally on a date, and after years and years of regret and frustration suddenly giving him another chance, what does Cage do with this opportunity? Show up late because he's too busy looking at himself in the mirror. You deserve a second chance. A uh, typical Cageism. This makes Roxanne so upset that she checks her magic eight ball. Wait, what? what about you? 
movie that's teenage My Little Pony fan fiction bad. Is there also an anvil in her purse to knock herself out in case she sees something else that might shock her? Oh my god! Another cute boy I used to like! <laughs> But Cage is interrupted from his incredibly important mirror watching by the fires of Fonda, who now tells him that Cage, as the writer, must stop his son from getting the contract which he spontaneously now for some reason decides he wants. I guess he just hit puberty and you suddenly want the contract of a thousand souls. Go figure. You're under contract, remember? <laughs> if you succeed, I'll return your soul. You know, I guess it's kind of fitting seeing how easy Ryder is passing on a mission to difficult in any way to get emotionally attached Ryder. So the devil's son and his droogs try to locate Cage, but come across a man and his lantern. Oh, for fuck's sake, movie. When the flying hell does anyone carry a lantern? Unless you're in the Haunted Mansion or Scooby-Doo episode, you use a fucking flashlight. You really shouldn't be here. That's what they keep telling me. But Cage drops in as he finally starts to transform into the Ghost Rider. And there's no CG being used here, folks. Cage can just set himself ablaze whenever he's asked. And I'm not gonna lie, when Ghost Rider is on screen, it's pretty fucking awesome. Looking for someone. Back to hell. Granted, his voice isn't really anything that interesting, but then again, I guess it would be even stranger if it was still Cage's voice coming out of it. You turn me on, barump. You turn me on, barump. You're not too tall, you're not too short, you're not too round, barump. <laughs> So the writer is ready to kick some ass until he's nailed by Nicolas Cage's greatest arch nemesis. What is it with Nicolas Cage and trucks? If he's not dreaming about them hitting little girls, he's getting hit by them in real life. Maybe Optimus Prime just likes punking with celebrities. Come on, Autobots. Let's scare the shit out of Whoopi Goldberg next. <laughs> But Cage does manage to get out and get his revenge. Ashes to asses, dust to fuck. You shoulda hit me with that goddamn truck. So after chasing the evil planeteers away, he tours around town trying to take even more evil souls to hell. One of them, understandably so, trying to axe off Rebel Wilson. Thanks. I'm off to ask Conan O'Brien to finance a horrible sitcom. Your soul is stained by the blood of the innocents. Well, you have no lips and yet somehow you still form consonants. Feel their pain. So he takes his soul to hell, has himself a good sleep, and ends up in a cemetery. Owned by, of course, Sam Elliott, who knows all about him. Did I say something funny? We're big on irony around here. Got by the shed. Oh yeah, I forgot, it's Sam Elliott, a man who's made a mumbling dialect from his inability to eat his own mustache. Don, I got a nice cozy spot pick out for you. I mean, is that some sort of Eastern thing? Things are made much better when Cage and Elliot have to carry on a conversation of mumbles. One deal at a time. Sterilize. Pin and stare. Have there been others? Sterilize that for me. There was some... Sear the souls of wicked. Jesus! I've had a better time understanding the Wookiees in the Star Wars Christmas special! All an angel was cast out of heaven by St. Michael himself. So he tells him that the Devil's Son and his minions were angels cast out of heaven. And also, we learn the name of the Devil's Son, too. You ready for this? No, seriously, are you ready for this? It's... it's pretty funny. What's this have to do with Blackheart? Blackheart. Okay, I am totally convinced that this was originally a Care Bears cartoon. I mean, think about it. The silly shadow, the guy with the lantern, the fucking eight ball. This is all stuff you'd see in a preschool Saturday morning lineup. And now, the villain's name is Blackheart? Fucking Blackheart? It's like calling your villain Dark Bad or Mean Poop. 
I mean, with all this talk of the devil and fallen angels and such, do you really think that this part made it into the Bible? You think that was actually the devil child's name? Well, I don't want to step on anyone's religious toes, so let's just double check it to be sure. Oh wow, Revelations 2010. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, along with his son, tee hee ha ha, his son, pwiff heckle heckle, I can't believe I'm saying this, his son, Blackheart, pla ha ha, okay guys, who's punking me? Wow, God does have a sense of humor. Tired of cleaning the house with those oily rags that just seem to move the dirt around? Well, why don't you try Sam Wow, the only towel endorsed by Sam Elliott. The instructions are very simple. Okay then. And, just as Sam mentioned, Sam Wow works on any surface, except for latex, which would cause a burning reaction if it came in contact with human skin. Ah! Ah! Oh my god! Help me, what do I do? Take any Sam Wow, because somebody needs to soak up all that blood. And remember, Hush, madame, hush, madame, See you, friend. You got more of that good sarsaparilla. So after Cage realizes he can summon fire through his fist and tried to scare himself in the mirror. <laughs> hey, to be fair, it's scarier than this. Do I'm gonna get ya, I'm gonna get ya. He apologizes to Roxanne, who rightfully so, isn't pleased that he abandoned her once again. That is, until later that night when she realized that she somehow was wrong. I came to apologize. I'm leaving town tonight and uh, I didn't want what I said today to be the last words between us. That's okay. No, it's not. Lady, what the fuck is wrong with you? You have nothing to apologize for! This is the guy who abandoned you when you were gonna run away forever with him and then never showed up when he was trying to make amends. Mostly because he was just staring at himself in the goddamn mirror. He seems to do a lot of that in this movie. These are big asshole issues and yet you constantly treat it like he spilled mustard on your dress or something. Oh well, at least she's saying goodbye and isn't dumb enough to spontaneously go back to him. Bitch, what is wrong with you? I've seen games of Pong that don't go back and forth as much as you do. And still, what does Cage end up doing? I think I should walk into your car. Okay, I've never seen landing lights more clearly labeled to get the fuck out of a relationship, and yet she still tries to fight for his heart. You almost kill yourself on the highway so you can ask me out and then you don't show. Then you keep my picture. But when I kiss you, you try to shove me out the door. What's... Don't you care about me at all, Johnny? The way I, in no logical sense, care for you. So, he finally gives her a logical explanation she can at least comprehend. I sold my soul to the devil. Well, most women would kick you in the rocks for saying something so stupid, but you throw in an eyebrow like that, and suddenly you go from Ghost Rider to Flynn Rider. For the devil. Well, yeah. I'm his bounty hunter, but it only happens at night, L like it is right now. So tonight, you'll... <sighs> I believe so, uh, which is why it's probably a very good idea that you... you run on home now, Roxanne. Look, this worked when I broke up with eight other chicks. I'm not sure why it's having no effect on you. I realize that you'd rather make up ridiculous stories and be honest with me. 
She does end up not believing him, big surprise, so I guess it's time for some proof. Wait a minute! A few minutes ago you were shooting flames out of your fist and now you're just hoping she trusts your fucking word? Would you believe me if I said I was Superman? But the cops figure out he's the one ripping up the town and throw him in jail, which causes him to start going crazy from being around so much evil. Looks like somebody's tripping out. You might be a big shot out there, Blaze, but in here you're nothing but a monkey in a cage! And don't you know, you don't put a monkey in a cage, you put a cage in a bear! It just makes more sense. So all the evil brings out the rider, and once again, it's pretty badass to watch. But sadly, the badassness meter decreases when you remember he's going up against Team Hot Topic. Hmm, you just love my toxic love. Things don't get much better when the police start to hunt him down. But he has an awesome way out of that too. Get over here! You're pissing me off. Okay, okay. Apologies, Captain, but apparently I was pissing off the flaming skull. I'm gonna go to McDonald's now. <laughs> so he takes out Bob, James Franco, Marley, and starts heading back. Okay, that was pretty fucking awesome. Throwing a few flaming doves on that one. Ah! Prepare to fire! Fire! Ah! And try not to hit the woman we let walk in front of us for some reason. So Roxanne makes her way to Cage's home because clearly no police would be looking for him there. I think the cops in this town mostly consist of this. <laughs> and of course, Bag Filmer is waiting. Roxanne. Ooh, I almost got you. I saw a little bit of a flinch there. A little bit of a flinch. Nobody out hamster. Your pendant stare doesn't work on me. I have no soul to burn. I guess the caretaker forgot to mention that, huh? He also forgot to mention that you can't choke a skeleton, but whatever. He knocks him down and tells him that he's taking his lady friend. You don't work for my father anymore. You work for me. Get the contract from the caretaker. Bring it to me in San Venganza. I'll be waiting at the Spencer's gifts where I work. So he goes back to Sam Elliott, who apparently has had the contract all along, but why the hell should he hand it over? He may have my soul, but he doesn't have my spirit. Any man who's got the guts to sell his soul for love, he's got the power to change the world. Fucking A, this is My Little Pony fan fiction! Can't you just see an episode ending like that? Anyone who would give their soul for love has the power to change the world. Isn't that right, Ghost Pony Rider? Right! So Elliot reveals that he was the original rider and decides to ride with Cage, finally showing his true form. It's time to deliver a badass climax of fiery biblical proportions with these two. This is the end of the trail for me. Huh? I got nothing left. I could only change one more time when I was saving for this. Wait a minute, you didn't save it to help him battle evil to save the world, you saved it to be a cool looking GPS? It's a cool cage from an earlier scene! What's the matter with you? Been trying to make things right ever since. Thank you. God knows I've made my share of mistakes. The most recent one being wasting that flaming horse thing. Thank you, kid. Uh, yeah, if I need directions to an all-night Taco Bell, I'll be sure to summon your blaze again. Or if I ever lose my cell phone in the dark, I'll call upon your fiery glow once more. I won't just use a flashlight. Or a lantern, which apparently we're still using this fucking dumbass universe. Starting to see why Stan Lee didn't cameo in this stupid piece of shit. So, Cade, suits up to... 
How'd Brendan Fraser and the Mummy put it again? Rescue the damsel in distress, kill the bad guy, and save the world. Yeah, that. As he hands over the contract but finds he can't become the writer when the sun comes up. So the badass in the cool coat fights the whiny rebellious goth kid half his age as little demons fly into his body making him the most powerful entity in the world. Oh, I'm sorry I was reciting the climax to Blade, how silly of me. Here's the climax to Ghost Rider. The badass in the cool coat fights the whiny rebellious goth kid half his age as little demons fly into his body making him the most powerful entity in the world. God, silly me confusing the two! My name is Legion, for we are many. And seeing how we are many, we all took a vote to see if we should talk normally or stretch out our mouths like Dark Heart. Okay, I uh, need one of these. So Cage tries to shoot him because, yeah, the most powerful thing in the world I'm sure can be stopped by a shotgun, which actually he kind of can. Weird. But he manages to get him in the shadows where his powers can still work. A thousand souls to burn. Oh yeah, probably should have thought about that whole becoming a thousand souls in front of the guy who can kill a thousand souls. Whoops. So Cage axes him off as the devil is pleased and offers him a chance to go back to normal. You get your life back. The love you've always wanted. You can start a family of your own. Let someone else carry this curse. You're free now. Must think of bullshit reason for sequel. Must find way to ditch girlfriend again. No, I'm gonna own this curse. Whenever innocent blood is spilt, it'll be my father's blood. And you'll find me there. A spirit of vengeance. I will make you pay for this. I mean, you didn't put any emotion in that scene. I'm starting to wonder if we got the real Nicolas Cage. This, of course, means abandoning his woman again. Only this time the reasons are... even kind of stupider. This is what you always were meant to be. Get your second chance. Don't worry. We'll meet under more embarrassing circumstances in Bad Lieutenant Port of Call, New Orleans. And Cage rides off into the desert in the most cartoonishly weird way possible, which is very fitting seeing how the rest of this movie was pretty much like one big cartoon. So that was Ghost Rider, and when there was actual Ghost Rider in it, it was kind of cool. Maybe I'm just a sucker for the visual, but every time that skull is on screen, the movie seems like pretty badass fun. But in a surprising move, Cage really kind of underplays it. Which at times can work to offset some of the strangeness. Okay, that was weird. But most of the time, it's just boring. Maybe he was hoping the contrast of the visual to his monotone delivery would even it out, but if the movie wanted to be more fun, he should have played it like Caster Troy or one of his other over-the-top roles. And this is just sort of underwhelming. The rest of the movie is all phoned in comic book tricks. And not the fun inventive ones, more the ones you've seen a million times but the filmmakers think you're seeing for the first time for some reason. It's stupid, silly, cliched, which is usually fine for a Cage film, but in this case, it was just boring. And it takes a lot of skill to make a character as cool looking as this boring. So yeah, Mr. Director, go back to scaring us with your creepy ass snowman because this stinker sure ain't keeping anyone awake. Thanks for joining me for Nicolas Cage Month. I hope you enjoyed it, and, well, there's only one person fit enough to exit us out. The big man himself, Sam Elliott. I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and a new year of madness is on the way! kids. Some mother buckers are always trying to ice skate uphill.
Marathi.